What's going on? Raven Ritual 666 back from the dead with another Diablo 4 build guide. Today I am super excited to bring to you the new Spirit Born class and my leveling build, the Soaring Eagle. Now this build has been so much fun to play from my first playthrough of the Vessel of Hatred. Um, I, like some of the other Diablo partners, have been super lucky and honoured to be able to play an early access version of the Spirit Born, so I could bring out some leveling guides for you to help you get started when you kick off the Vessel of Hatred. So, looking at the Eagle build, it is very fun for your first playthrough. The reason being you have a lot of movement speed, which helps you out going through the campaign for the first time. You get crit chance based off your movement speed, and so many ways to play vulnerable. And with the key passive, we can get 45% multiplicative damage to vulnerable enemies, which we can do consistently. So having a look here at some gameplay footage, you can see we can just blast. Um, we can apply a few of our skills through cooldowns. We move. We've got Soar as a movement speed plus a damage skill. Um, it's just a very, very fun way to play. And I wanted to bring this guide out as this is the first playstyle I've kind of used for the Vessel of Hatred. Um, but it's super easy to set up, it's super cheap, it has very, very low gear requirements. In fact, you don't really need any aspects at all. There is one that is really going to help with your damage uh, for the Quill uh, Volley, um, but we'll explain that um, when we're looking at some of the skills. So if you enjoy um, some of this gameplay footage here, where we can just move, kill enemies, teleport through the use of our saw, then stay tuned for the skills while we look at how you can set up this build for super cheap and have so much fun in the Vessel of Hatred. So, taking a look at our gear, there is no real aspects that you desperately need to set this build up for leveling. However, there is one that is really going to help with your damage. Your core skill, the Quill Volley, is our main source of damage. And this aspect, Quill Volley's feathers explode at their apex and return to where they cast both dealing 69% of their normal damage. Ideally for, I think, an endgame setup, this is going to be best on a two-hander. I did get that initially, but with leveling, you need to keep swapping out your weapon. So with the cost of imprinting aspects early on, it's best just to chuck this onto your amulet. Um, if you get anything else for a resource, um, it would be really nice to have on one of your rings, and any other damage aspect is good to have. There is nothing particular that is good um, that I've tested at this stage. So ideally... You know, if you can get the rebounding aspect, chuck that on your amulet, and that's going to really carry you through leveling. Um, looking at some of the other the gear that's really helpful, um, movement speed is kind of nice with an eagle build. The reason being is we get a lot more crit chance um, when we're moving. So, And the crit chance based off our skills um, is increased based on our movement speed. So the more movement speed you can have, the more you're going to crit, the more damage you're going to do. So boots are put on movement speed um, as a passive, as well as onto my amulet. Undying is kind of nice, um, if you can get the aspect, um, it's just going to help you get a little bit of passive health regen, we don't have any other way to, to regen our health at the, at the moment, um, but otherwise, um, let's take a little bit of a look at our mercenaries, anything else you can get for damage reduction or extra damage is kind of nice, but don't worry too much about putting on those aspects, use what you get while you're leveling, that's going to increase your armor, that is going to increase your damage per second on your weapon, but just make sure if you can get rebounding, put that one on your amulet. So, taking a look at our spirit hall, we are running eagle spirits. Um, so, once you get to level 15, you can unlock your priority quest as a spirit born. No spoilers, but it is a very fun quest, so enjoy it. But casting an eagle skill grants 4 seconds of the storm feathers movement speed bonus. When you evade, you fling up to 8 storm feathers for every remaining second, each dealing 125% um, lightning damage and making targets vulnerable for five seconds this is a great source of vulnerable for damage but also every time you evade you fling out those storm feathers which kill enemies it's actually really really strong um, and then once you get to level 30 you can add um, your next spirit which we're going eagle again for every four meters you move your critical strike chance increases by four percent this bonus is reset to two seconds after you critically strike so i'll show you quickly why we use the rebounding aspect and how these storm feathers kind of work so we'll go out I'm um, firstly going to have to cast an eagle skill to get this stat. But now every time I dodge, I'm going to fling out those little storm feathers. Now with the rebounding aspect, you'll see here, when I cast um, Quill Volley, they go out and come back. It's kind of like Barrage and Bone Spirit, uh, Bone Spear, sorry, mixed together. It, it's very fun. Uh, it's a cool playstyle. 
and we can use our basic, we can keep resetting our dodge, which means we can keep pulling out these storm feathers and keep doing a, a lot of very nice damage. So, kind of turns dodge into a damage skill, which is really nice to play. So, having a look at our mercenaries, I really haven't played too much with them, as I've only just kind of unlocked them for the first time. But with the skills, we're going to spec mainly into damage, so ideally I'm going to use my mercenaries to get as much resistance, armor, and passive health regen as possible, since that's kind of the area we're lacking while we're leveling. Um, Rahir seems to be a quite a good option, because if we have a look um, just in his skill tree, um, Ground Slam's quite good, um, as it gives us some max life back, um, it gives us resistance to all elements, uh, and down the bottom we can get 25% increased damage um, by allies, that are affected by his bastion so this seems like a pretty good option that i'm going to test with but for the end game build there'll be a lot more i'm looking into and just as a, a secondary reinforcement at the moment i am using subo but feel free to kind of use whoever you want test it out while you're leveling that's kind of the enjoyment of using these mercenaries for the first time so taking a look at our skill tree I'll take you through the best path for leveling and some of the changes you will make um, while you're having your first playthrough of Spirit Pawn. So if you don't have Renown unlocked, honestly, for your first two points, you're better off to not run Thunder Spike um, until you've got the points to pick up Quill Volley. Thunder Spike does not do damage. Um, it's only used as kind of a resource skill um, to get our resource back, but also to allow us to infinite dodge and use those um, lightning feathers. So if you have done your Renown, perfect, go through Thunder Spike all the way to Accelerate the Thunder Spike. That allows us to um, constantly evade. Almost one basic attack you can evade, one basic attack you can evade. If not, run two points into Thrash and Enhance Thrash for damage, or Withering Fist and Enhance Withering Fist. But for the Eagle build, we want to go all the way through to Accelerated Thunder Spike. It does also apply Vulnerable when we do um, basic attack and dodge through enemies. Um, next, we want to go through to Cool Volley. Enhanced Cool Volley because it applies Vulnerable. And then Advantageous Cool Volley. That's what allows it to spread out um, with multiple feathers. And then with the rebounding aspect, rebound back to us. They're like that barrage kind of feel if you played Rogue before. Or kind of like um, Bone Spear if you've played Necromancer before. So we want to pick that up. Um, as soon as we've picked up those points, we are into the next tree. Um, initially, because we want additional skills to use, run one Saw, one Vortex, and one Ravager. Uh, Vortex is very nice because it creates a cyclone that pulls in all enemies. You can Quill Volley them all at once. And you want to then pick up your point into Casting Vortex increases the damage of your next skill cast by 20%. Once we get further into the tree, we will actually take these points out and to replace Vortex with the Seeker Ultimate. Um, but until we get down to our ultimate, there is no point um, having an empty slot. Um, next, Saw, Enhanced Saw, because it gives us a uh, crit chance. And if it doesn't hit any enemies, we get a lot of movement speed, which really helps you traverse the map. Um, finally, for the passive, um, I do want to play with Unstoppable later, but for the leveling build, um, applying Vulnerable is very nice to have. Because uh, you can just run through the next set of enemies and apply Vulnerable. Um, we do want to pick up three points in a Vigorous because you are going to struggle with um, your Vigor. So that is very nice to have. Um, we will pick up um, Enhanced Ravager and then Measured Ravager. So why are we using a Jaguar skill? Well, this is incredibly good. It kind of acts as our ultimate while we're leveling. Every time you use Ravager, um, you get uh, you unleash... You get 40% um, multiplicative damage for the next 6 seconds. So it is a very good source of damage, especially paired with Vortex. And um, casting Vortex increases the next skill damage by 20%. So you can kind of run in there, or soar in there, which applies Vulnerable. Bring them in with Vortex. Hit your Jaguar skill, and then Quill Volley. And that'll just pretty much one-shot that whole mob for you. Um, and then, once we've got those points, we can finally pick up Razor Wings. Razor Wings isn't really good until you can get um, invasive Razor Wings that spirals it around you. It's great source of vulnerable, and it flies back to you on return, which is good. Um, once we've picked up invasive Razor Wings, we're going to get a lot of damage out of Brilliance and Acceleration. So, Brilliance is going to give us movement speed, which is going to increase our crit chance. Um, and then you want to pick up three points into acceleration, which is actually nuts. It's actually better than what it says in this planet. It's 30% um, damage after um, we 
dodge, which is very nice. We can almost infinitely dodge, and you're going to get 30% damage with your eagle skills, so it's actually kind of insane. Next, we are um, being able to pick up our Seeker. So, we can pick up a point in the Seeker. We should now be able to take these points out of Vortex. And then, we can go through to Har Harmonious Seeker. Oh, we need an extra point down here, so we'll pick three points up into Brilliance. Then we can pick up um, our Harmonious the Seeker. And then, finally, into Exalted the Seeker. Um, the Seeker is really cool as an ultimate because it actually gives you three charges, which means about every 15 seconds you can cast an ultimate, and that's with no cooldown reduction. Um, and it does a lot of damage. It's, it's great AoE, and it's a very fun ultimate to play with. I think endgame build, we may not use this as an ultimate and use something else. However, for leveling, it's just really good to have because it's, it's cheap, it has a cooldown, and doesn't cost us vigor, which we can save for our Quill Volley. Uh, going back, we're going to pick up some of our passives. These passives here on the D4 build guide is actually different to what it is in-game. Um, but there is an extra point here. It branches into three. And Apex is kind of over here. But the first one is um, like a weapon choice. So it pretty much gives you um, a, a damage buff uh, depending on what skills you have. So it's actually called Focal Point, And it gives you a bonus based on the weapon type you're wielding. Um, ideally, we want to use a... Polearm for this build if you can because Polearm gives us 30% lucky hit chance to make enemies vulnerable Another great source of vulnerable until we get into our Paragon So you want to pick up what is focal point three points and then the next point there will actually be apex So we'll just take three points into diminish for now, but you won't actually use that Diminishment um, in the the live server then you do want to pick up um Increase dodge chance during evade, and when you dodge, you get increased strike chance, so that's very nice. And then we want to pick up three points into our mobility school, skill cooldown, depending on how far we've traveled with our saw. Okay, coming back down, um, if we're up to our key passive, which we are, you want to use a vital strikes. Vital strikes is amazing. It's 45% multiplicative damage to our vulnerable enemies, and it really feels good. Um, it does unapply the vulnerable, but you get a little bit of health regen, it gives you vigor, it does remove the vulnerable effect, and that's why we need to apply so much more vulnerable through the rest of our skills. Um, then, we want to probably put the five points into uh, Quill Volley, as that's our main source of damage. And then, uh, for the next leveling, you just come through here, you want to pick up the resolution for the increased damage to elites. Um, max vigor, three points into Supremacy, and then finally, your next two points in a resolution. And that's pretty much the path for leveling the Soaring Eagle to begin with. That is the Soaring Eagle leveling guide. It's very easy to set up. Um, come join me live on Twitch where I will be streaming the Vessel of Hatred. Um, just a reminder, this is an early access build. It doesn't even include the day one patch that we will be getting ready for Season 6 and ready for the first expansion of Diablo 4, the Vessel of Hatred. Um... Please hit the subscribe button down below. It really helps support me continue to make these type of videos for you. I will have more build guides coming out, more endgame builds coming for the Spirit Born for this season. So stay tuned. Um, thank you so much for being here. I will see you all on the next one.